Okay, so the policy claim here is that uh, nuclear energy should be expanded in the U.S. Uh, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, the first of which was that um, that nuclear energy is extremely efficient. It's very flexible. It's very safe. Um, but I'm here to tell you that it's not exactly any of those things, particularly, um, especially the flexibility of it to start with. Um, first of all, the way that uh, nuclear power plants deal with their toxic waste is that they set them for 40 to 50 years inside or in a lake or the ocean or a pond or anything like that uh, to lower the radiation count. And then from there, they basically just store it underground for an indefinite amount of time. And it just kind of sits there. Um, and it can't really break down because the half-life on it, which is the life of which it takes uh, half of the molecules to become unradioactive or to break down, uh, is in the thousands of years. And so we basically create that byproduct that lasts on this earth for many generations, which isn't good if we're going to continuously ramp that up. We're going to have more and more of that happening and more and more of that trying to be stored in the ground. Eventually there might actually be a problem with that. So that's a concern. Um, already the USA is the number one producer of nuclear energy and it only covers about 20% of our actual power. Um, and in that, we use over 18,000 tons of uranium a year. And in doing so, basically, it sounds like a really expensive process to having to get all that uranium, especially when there's such a limited supply. And the only way to get more of it sometimes is to actually make it, which is another big bag of mixed nuts or whatever. Um, so, uh, there's, a, there's this other thing about the fear of nuclear power plants. Now, there are precautions to keep nuclear power plants from having what are called meltdowns, which are basically when the reactors can no longer contain the heat that is uh, firing these uh, chemical reactions to produce the steam to make these turbines work to give us that energy. Um, but there have been two known incidents in recent history. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. The first of which I want to talk about is the Chernobyl incident, um, in which uh, Ukrainian, or actually it was Russian uh, scientists, were very uh, not, <laughs> they were not efficient, and they were unsafe in the practice of what they were doing with their nuclear reactor. And then it had a meltdown, which eventually moved 220,000 people away from the area. And it made a contamination zone of 4,300 square kilometers, which is a pretty big space to move. Um, now, uh, on the subject of radiation, now the radiation most of the time actually isn't necessarily always that deadly to you. Um, it can affect you, it can cause cancer, but the big fear, uh, the big problem with meltdowns is not necessarily the meltdown itself, because we're, we've gotten pretty efficient at cleaning up, but it's actually the, um, the movement of a population away from that zone to make sure that they're safe. Uh, when the Fukushima disaster happened in, uh, I think it was 2011, or yeah, um, the, uh, what ended up happening was that anyone within a 20 kilometer radius of that plant was moved away, but because of that, there had actually been uh, a, it was about, a, I think, there was definitely at least 200 deaths that were related to the fact, not necessarily that they got radiation poisoning, but because they were moved away from the site. And if we didn't rely on nuclear energy in the first place, we wouldn't have to worry about any of that kind of disaster from happening. Um, so already the government has started not to focus so much on uh, nuclear energy as it has on 
renewable energy like solar, wind, uh, and that kind of stuff. And there's already benefits to it um, to start. Uh, the government is already giving tax subsidies to all renewable energy programs, which is actually allowing the cost of, say, solar panels and wind turbines are to actually be significantly less than um, nuclear energy. Um, so wind energy, for example, used to cost uh, 55 cents per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hours basically a measure of how much storage of energy we have. Um, it went from 55 cents in 1980 to now 2.35 cents today, which is a significant decrease and it allows for us to start building that infrastructure. And it actually may, it may require a bit more of surface area to produce those kinds of things, but at the same time, it is cheaper for us and it's also not producing any waste. There's no waste at all with wind power and there's only the heat from the sun that comes from solar power. So um, with that, I rest my case.